Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be giving you unique sci-fi and fantasy recommendations. As I've been reading more sci-fi and fantasy over the last few years, one of my favourite things to do is find books that are a slightly different take on, you know, very typical fantasy and sci-fi tropes that we see. And so I've compiled a list of books that I think are quite unique and I'll tell you why. And uh, I, I might do a part two to this book, but without further ado, let's start. So the first series that I'm going to talk about is the Stone Arts and the Chameleon series by Ricardo Pinto. This is a grimdark fantasy series that I've mentioned quite a few times on my channel now. It's seven books. The books are really short. And it's one of those series that I think when you start reading it, you're a little bit confused as to what this world is about, but confused in the best way. Because as we begin to peel back this world, you realise how incredibly rich it is. And Pinto is an incredibly talented writer. He uses very interesting techniques to build the world up. So one, one thing that I've mentioned before is he uses colour to really paint the kind of tone of the world, if that makes sense. It's really quite phenomenal. I've never seen an author achieve it in the way that he has achieved it. And it's absolutely stunning to read as well because you really get a sense of what this world is like and the different players in it. And I think that's the main reason why it's unique is, is that he uses very specific techniques and mechanisms, and that's just an example of one of them, to get across the sense of foreboding that we have in this world. It is a very dark series, not one that I would recommend to a lot of people, but if you like grim dark and darker fantasy, then this is a unique series that I would definitely recommend to you. Next up, we have a sci-fi book, and that is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. This is a book that I read at the tail end of last year. And again, I, I think Jimenez uses a lot of different techniques in his series that are just exceptionally well executed. I think The Spear Cuts Through Water is like a multi-POV story, and it's told over time. And I think that's what makes it unique, is the fact that it's told in a way where kind of the passage of time is felt as you read the book, if that makes sense. I don't think that does make sense, but I think if you've read it, you might know where I'm going with it. Like it's very grandiose on scale, but not grandiose necessarily in terms of the setting, even though you could argue it is grandiose in terms of the setting because it's like a multi-planetary world, but it's more like time plays such an important aspect of the story and you really feel it as you read the book. And that's what makes it unique and quite magical, in my opinion. That will bring me on to the next one. This one is unique in a different way, and it's because he uses different mechanisms to tell the story. He tells the story in first, second and third person. There is a story within a story within a story. He uses like the theatre as like a way to tell the secondary layer of the story. Like, it's just incredible. This is one of the most incredibly well-written books I've ever read. And it is also one of the most unique books I've ever read because it's just so technically complex, yet when you read it, it's so easy to read. It's a dream to read. It's so beautiful and sumptuous. And it's one of those books that I don't think I could read every single book in that way, but when you read it, you really appreciate the skill and the thought put into this type of story because it is truly exquisite. Next up, we have a sci-fi book that I may have a review up about it when this video goes live. I don't know, but if, if I have, definitely go check it out because it's such an underrated sci-fi book. And that is China Mountain Zhang by Maureen McHugh. This is a sci-fi book that got recommended to me by Raf. Thank you, Raf. Fantastic, incredible book. Without a doubt, one of my favourite sci-fi books of all time now. So good. And it's one of those books that is kind of written like a collection of short stories. We have our main character, Zhang. I won't go into too much detail because I'll leave that for my review, but we follow our main character. Uh, but in between his chapters, we get little vignettes into other characters that he comes across at some point or another in his life. And those stories are so beautifully interwoven into his story. And you don't realise the kind of secondary and tertiary impacts of our behaviour on other people and we see that play out pretty much in real time in this book. It is an absolute pleasure to read and when you make the little connections between all of the different characters it's so satisfying and it's absolutely stunning. Very unique in the sense that I've not really seen anybody do that in sci-fi before. I've read that style of storytelling in a few fantasy books before. It was done okay but I've never read that in a sci-fi and I think she does it absolutely fantastically. 
All right, we got three more. Next up, we have A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. And the reason why I say this is unique is it's kind of similar to China Mountain Zhang in the sense that it's four books, but there is an overarching story that combines, that kind of spans these four books. You know, we have four cycles is what the author calls them. And we follow our main character, Ged. Uh, and Ged is the kind of consistent or mostly the consistent piece across all four of these stories. And we uh, kind of go on this journey, this adventure with him. And the thing I really like about the series and the thing that I think makes it unique is, is that we have these kind of four individual books that you could, in theory, read individually, maybe aside from the last one. At least I didn't necessarily know how they connected. But then once you finish reading all four books, you're like, oh, this makes sense. It's just so well done. So, so well done. And it's a series that I'm going to reread because I don't think I fully appreciated how incredible this series is when I first read it. I need to do a reread of it at some point. All right, on to the penultimate one. We have The Just City by Joe Walton. We have some really heavyweight female fantasy writers in this list. And The Just City by Joe Walton, I would consider a sci-fi. It's a sci-fi fantasy. I think it spans both genres. And it's a book that Matt, one of my patrons, uh, recommended to me. And I just absolutely loved it. And I'm going to do a review on this soon. And it's basically about uh, a bunch of people, or a bunch of gods, I should say, particularly Apollo and Athena, who want to enact Plato's Republic into reality. They want to run an experiment by creating Philosopher King. The Republic, for anyone who doesn't know, and I don't think I've ever mentioned this on my channel, is probably my favourite philosophical work of all time. I just love it. I've read it like five or six times. I read it once a year. It's just one of these things that I constantly think about. So when Matt put this book on my radar, I was so excited to read it because I was like, this is literally, like, I would love to run this as an experiment, building the Republic. Like, I would love to run it as, a, as an experiment to see how it would actually play out, given human nature and given kind of pre-existing societal and cultural norms that we all carry. I've always just thought about it, like genuinely. So this book is essentially about the goddess Athena and the god Apollo, as they essentially like hire a bunch of people to enact the idea of raising children as philosopher kings. And it's just so well done. It's really, really well done. And the reason why it's so unique is, is that it's one of these books that I just kind of buckled in and enjoyed it for what it was. Like, I don't really have necessarily, like, tons to say about, like, the thematic work or the characters. It's just, you're kind of just seeing a thought experiment play out. And it's just really interesting to be an observer watching the thought experiment play out. And obviously you have, a, you naturally form opinions about, like, certain rules they implement and how you would potentially go about changing those rules from Plato's original piece of work. But... I just loved being there for the ride and I loved also the fact that we have gods actually involved in this and then we have like actual humans involved in this and also how they interact with each other. It's very very well done and I'm really excited to read the second book and I think a lot of you who kind of like philosophy in your books would really enjoy this book. And then last but most certainly not least we have The Mermaid's Tale by D.G. Valjean. This is a self-published fantasy book and the reason why I think this book is unique is because I think it takes quite a lot of fantasy tropes and kind of turns them on their heads. And I I really like the fact that our main character, when we start out, is very much like an outsider, is very much somebody who is not accepted in society. Now that's not unique at all in fantasy or sci-fi. It's very common actually. It's probably one of the most common tropes that we have in SFF. But the reason why I like it is because our main character is somebody that not even we necessarily want to get behind. And I would say, our main character is very much morally grey but I think it's her journey that she goes through up until the end of the book that really made it feel like a very fresh take on fantasy for me and I don't want to say more than that because I don't want to spoil it but this is such an underrated read if you especially like dark fantasy grimdark which this definitely is and I don't recommend it if you don't like grimdark it's very dark in places but if you do like it and you want like something that's a bit fresh and that's a bit new and is a different way of doing fantasy then I would strongly recommend this one because I think where our character starts and where they end up is just really well done and I think is quite atypical for fantasy in my opinion. So there we have it those are some unique sci-fi and fantasy reads that I recommend to you. Let me know down below if you have any recs. I really love finding little gems that are like 
do something a bit different and stick in my mind for that exact reason. I really had fun compiling this list and I definitely will do a part two once I have more books to add to this list hopefully but do let me know down below if you have any recommendations that you feel like did something new like let me know down below what you think it did differently and I would definitely add it to my list to check it out. There we have it please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and please do comment down below if you have some recs or if there's any of these books that you've read and I will see you there. Thanks for watching folks stay safe take care and I will see you in my next video bye. Thank you.